Good morning, family. Tony here once again. Today is Sunday, October 1st. Hope everyone's been doing good. Hope everyone is not too let down by the 29th prediction. Um, well, uh, since then, there's been a lot of uh, chatter and buzz on the internet about tabernacles. Of course, everyone knew that if it didn't happen on the Feast of Atonement, it was going to go to tabernacles. But I've got some nuggets and I've got some good stuff. And um, actually, some of the stuff that I got, I got yesterday. I was led to it, um, and I'll explain why here in a little bit. But also, Brenda Weltner had something a similar nugget in her last video. Now, you know, I don't agree with everything that Brenda says, but she's got a lot of good information. You know, I glean from that. So um, I'm just going to say that um, uh, I think that, well, something that, you know, some of the things that she says spot on. But I do agree with her on this one. This one because um, it's the same thing I'm looking at for one thing, and, and a lot of other people. Even though her means of getting to those date or to that date or those dates is you know different, um, the fact it's the same date. So I'm going to go with that. And uh, she came to one of those the same way I did. So before I get started in any of this, um, if you haven't come to Lord Jesus Christ, now's the time. Believe the gospel, Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That Jesus died, was buried, and raised on the third day, and he shed every drop of his precious blood for your sins. So if you believe that with your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you're saved. If you believe that Jesus died, was raised, was buried, and raised on the third day, and put your faith and trust in him, you're saved. Now, the, the verse from John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believeth in Greek, that word is, that's used there, it means, it's pastuo in Greek, and I never can pronounce that, but pastuo, and it means to put your faith and trust in. It's a belief of, like you would believe in a, in, a, in a hero, and Jesus is our hero, but putting your faith and trust in that what he said was, was, was true, for one thing, and what he did and what he performed was true and, do, and will do for you what he says it would do, and that is to pay the ultimate price for our sins, past, present, and future. And if you believe this with your heart and put your faith and trust in him, you were saved and sealed the day of redemption, and God will send you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you and teach you. That's the that's the gist of it. Um, we could go. You could go into semantics about um, Christianity and your walk with Christ, and you could do all that. But to get saved, you got to believe. That's that's it. I mean, it's, it's nothing else. So put your faith and trust in Jesus, and don't waste any time because right now it's crucial that people are getting saved. Because if they wait, if they say to themselves, oh, "I need to get back in church," I'm not living right or anything like that, you're going to miss your opportunity. Jesus said, come to me as you are, because as while we were yet sinners, he died for us. So don't waste time thinking that you've got to better yourself. You go come to him as you are, contrite. In other words, humble and in guilt and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm, in, need of, I'm in need of your your sacrifice for my sins. I believe in you. I believe you're the son of God, that you died and was buried and raised on the third day for the redemption of sins. And I want to accept your free gift of life. That's essentially it. That's it. I mean, that's that's it. Believing is all it takes. But if you want to come to him with a prayer, there you go. Do it today. Time is running out. Jesus is coming back soon. He could be back this week. He could be. At, he could come back today. We we really don't know. So we're all, really all just trying to to narrow it down. We know that we're in the season. We know we're in the time frame. We know that everything is ripe for the rapture. Um, the shadow of the tribulation is falling on us. War is brewing. Everything's going crazy. We've had all these miraculous signs in the sky wonders in heaven like luke 21 we've seen it all except the literal stars falling from heaven which i believe is satan coming down at the um at the uh, at the war in heaven which is in revelation 12 i've been talking about that for years that i believe that that is the rapture verse in revelation is the fact that the that the um the child is called up and um the devil is cast down and i believe all that happens simultaneously so that's what we're looking for. But, um, okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is simply the uh, the Feast of Sukkot and how it may relate to the rapture, that the rapture's... Now, here's one thing you need to understand, okay? The rapture, 
just like the um, the verse of the Bible that talks about um, the vision is for an appointed time. At the end, it will it will speak. It will not lie. Wait for it. Though it tarry, it will not tarry, because it doesn't really tarry. I believe what that's saying is basically we uh, we it appears to tarry because we think that that it's that it's time. But in, in all reality, God has a set and appointed time for it. And um, we, when a day goes by, we think, oh, the Lord's not coming, he, you know, and I've heard it all. I've heard every, every you know, sad excuse that it didn't happen, you know, to the point where God just don't love us anymore. I mean, everything. But none of that's true. God has an appointed time. The devil has no power over God or any power over the rapture whatsoever. God has an appointed time. And when that time comes, I mean, we could sit here and guess till we're blue in the face and get it wrong and be sad. But the truth is, it's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. And we probably won't figure it out. <laughs> that's, the, that's the bottom line. But we're doing it. We're looking and we're watching because Jesus commanded us to. And it's fun to try to guess it. I would suggest don't put your hopes in it. Don't, don't put your hopes in the date more so than you do in the time frame. We know he's close. We know it's, you know, the, the season is ripe. And, um, you know, in, in John 7... I'm sorry, uh, not John 7, I believe it's John chapter 9. Jesus talks about he has to work while it's daylight because once the nighttime comes, no one can work. We are basically the same thing. The light is in us. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. He has to work in the daytime because he's the light of the world. You know, once it gets dark because he's gone. You know, once he leaves, it's dark. So once the Holy Spirit and us, we leave with the Holy Spirit, the world will turn dark. And um, evil will abound, and no one can work if we're not even here. So we gotta, we gotta spread the gospel and work while we're here. If if there's anything you want to do, you gotta do it now. If you wait, it's like getting saved. If you wait, it may be too late. So, um, the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, it started the evening of Friday, according to most calendars in Israel. And um, it ended, the first day ended Saturday, in the evening of Saturday in Israel. And, and in Eastern Standard Time, that's around midday, okay? So I, I cannot know exact time. It's not exactly. But sometime around midday, yesterday was the second, start of the second day. And sometime around midday today, we'll start the third day, okay? And the actual feast will end either Friday or Saturday. Friday being the seventh day, which is the seven days of Sukkot, or the eighth great day, which would be on a Saturday, and Saturday is October the 7th, and, and Saturday is the Sabbath. So um, there's a reason why I believe that it's going to be Saturday, even though it is the 7th. And um, a Sabbath, I mean, it, it's seventh, the 7th seventh is a reason too. But um, I'll, I'll get to all that. I want to um, first start with this. I want to show you how I come about Saturday being the 8th great day. Okay, Friday evening to Saturday evening was the first day. Saturday evening to Sunday evening was the second day. Sunday evening to Monday evening is the third day. Monday evening to Tuesday evening is the fourth day. Tuesday evening to Wednesday evening is the fifth day. Wednesday evening to Thursday evening is the sixth day. Thursday evening to Friday evening is the seventh day. Tabernacles is a seven-day feast, but there's always that eighth great day, that gathering. Um, there's a holy convocation and um, a solemn assembly. And so that... I'm going to go over two. We have, I've got a Bible study at the end here where we're going to go through some of that stuff. But um, Friday evening to Saturday evening is the great eight, the eighth great day. Saturday, and that's um, October the 7th. Okay, so I want to start with this. The eighth great day is on October the 7th. This is what I found so interesting, but this is not what God led me to see that I said that, that Brenda Weltner also had a date. I'll get to that too. But right now, shofars. I heard shofars in 2020. I heard one in September on the seventh day. I did not hear one in October, but I did hear one in November on the seventh day. Um, on the on, on September, I heard one long blast, which is in Jewish custom, there's like this first blast. This is to get your attention. This is to get everybody listening and focused, you know, because what follows that is basically how they're going to know why you're blowing the trumpet. That first blast gets your attention, so you're listening, and then it kind of, you know, tells the story in a way. It gives you instruction in a way. But um, there's different kinds of blasts for different kinds of reasons and for different kinds of festivals or warning blasts and so forth. I'm not sure exactly, but I believe that this was a warning blast, but I got one long blast. 
Then I got three Shiver Rings, which is a medium blast. I did not get the little quick blast, which I think is called the Terora, the Terora blast, which is a staccato blast. Just da -da 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 -da. I didn't hear that, but I heard the do 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 do, and I heard that. That's exactly what I heard. Um, well, if I heard that exactly, I'd have been doing it myself. <laughs> but you know what I mean. So, um, so, so, so November the seventh, I heard the long blast, do, and then I heard do do do, and I heard that three times. The pause in between each one. So three times three. Now here's where I'm going with all this. Okay, the seventh is God's number. Seven is God's number. Um, there's two months, okay? It was two months because it was um, September and November that I heard the shofars. It was two shofars, and it was two different shofar sounds. There's your twos. It's three twos, in fact. Also, there's a three-month span from September to November. That's three months. Now, you also have the fact that um, you had three, like, instruction blasts, three, and then three times three. So you got a lot of twos and threes, which I believe could be pointing to this year, 23. But why was there not a shofar in October? I felt led to go out in September and November, but not in October, though I did go out three or four times, hoping nothing. It was the times I felt led, and that was on Labor Day of 2020 and September 7th. It was Labor Day. And then on November the 7th of 2020, I felt led. I, something just it felt like I was being you know, summoned or something. I can't explain it. I just I had to go. I had to go out. And I heard it. Both times it happened that way. So um, I'm not sure exactly what it meant, but I'm speculating. Now, here's why. Could November and September have been bookends to October? If, if September was a bookend and November was a bookend and the seventh day was a bookend, could it have been pointing to October the 7th, which just happens to fall on the eighth great day of Sukkot? Now, you might say, Jesus ain't going to come and get us on a Sabbath. That is the most accepted popular thing. But this is where my discovery came in yesterday, okay? I was listening to a watchman. I honestly don't even know. It might have been John Boucher. I can't remember because I, I, I turned it on, and, and for the life of me, I can't remember who I was listening to. But I fell asleep with the headphones on, and I woke up to, um, I guess it was the very next video in line because mine, mine's on, you know, just continues. It just keeps playing every video in a row, whatever's in the feed or whatever. And um, I wake up to the book of John, or I'm sorry, the gospel of John. Um, it was a movie full-length movie with a narration and it was about 10 minutes in and um, as I woke up and realized it was on I got interested and just went ahead and watched the whole thing when I got to this part this is when I when something struck me okay it had never struck me before until this time this time it struck me and I, I don't know why this time was different maybe because it means something but when I when he was talking to his disciples he told them it was it was a feast of tabernacles um, the feast was start was about to start. He's uh, they were all supposed to go to tabernacles to Judea, but in Judea the religious leaders were trying to seeking to kill Jesus. So he sent his disciples on ahead. He says, I, "I can't go. They're trying to kill me. They hate me. But they don't hate you. They, you know, y'all, you can go and you can speak, and they're not going to try to kill you." I, you know, basically, you know, to paraphrase. So he says, "Go on ahead, and uh, my hour has not come yet. My time has not come yet." or however he worded it. But after they left and were gone, he went about midway during the Feast of Tabernacles, he went to Judea, to the temple or the synagogues, and began to preach. Uh, I believe it was the temple. or I'm not sure now. Temple or synagogue. Anyways, he went, I think it was the temple, but he went in and he started preaching. And uh, the religious leaders kind of cornered him. And he um, basically says to them, you're angry with me. He says, you... Your law, Moses' law, allows for a person to be circumcised on the Sabbath. But he said, I made a man, uh, I can't remember the exact word, full wit, whole, or whatever. He made a man whole on the, on the Sabbath, and you're angry at me. He says, he says you're judged by the, the, the um, judgment of man when you should be judging by righteous judgment. And here's the thing. He's talking about circumcision, which is the separation of flesh 
which I've got a little bit of a study on that, not much, but I got some a verse on that. So why did he bring it up? That the whole point that I was thinking, why did John include this in the gospel that Jesus came to the feast late and start talking about circumcision, circumcision and healing a man on the Sabbath? And that was the big thing. It was a healing a man on the Sabbath midway through the um, Feast of Tabernacles. Now, I know I'm talking about the eighth day. I'm talking about the eighth day because that is one of my high watch days. But anywhere between now and Saturday next week is going to be a high watch, you know, for uh, other reasons. First, because Jesus came to the tabern I mean, to the Feast of Tabernacles midway through, almost like he came early. But the plan was to come on the, you see what I mean? The plan, not the, not the plan for him, but I mean, the, the overall plan is for the last day. The last day. Jesus says, I'll raise them on the last day. Could he have been referring to the Feast of Tabernacles and the last great day of Tabernacles? But he comes early. Everybody says he comes sooner than everyone thinks. And he doesn't delay. And though you think he tarries, but he doesn't which would allude to him coming later than we thought. But then again, we don't know. So it, there's, there's, a, it's, there's a lot to think about. There's a lot of pieces of this puzzle. There's a lot of moving parts. But I think that we are in the highest watch ever. And this is kind of, for me, will be the last highest watch. I'm not um, the whole month behind thing. We've done that for three years, four years in a row, and I'm not doing it this year. I just... Um, I think we're, we're, we're in the right month. But if we're not, then um, I hope I get proved wrong. I hope that you know it happens next month if it don't happen this month. But I believe it's going to happen this month. Um, what's interesting is that um, I ran across Brenda Weltner's video. I'm pretty sure it's her most recent video. It is, I'm sure. So she's, um, she's talking about the eighth day as well. She's talking about and reasons and passages about the eighth day, the same things that I'm looking at. But you know, different passages, except for the last one. She just happens to name John 7, and I'm like, what? And she starts reading where Jesus came to the feast early, and that he's, and, and all that. So, I mean, maybe not exactly what I was seeing, but she saw the fact that he came to the feast midway. He came early, mid, in the middle of the week. Well, Wednesday this week happens to be Tyler's birthday. Wednesday is October the 4th. He turns 22. 22. 11, 11 is 22. I don't know. No, that's it's here, neither here or there. That's just something that I'm thinking about. I always think when something's related to me or my family, I feel like it's something special. But, you know, usually nothing ever happens. So, But it, it is cool. It's cool to look at. could be the way God draws us all to him. Gets us all interesting and watching. But um, anyways, there's that. So so from today, which is would be taber the third day of Tabernacles at midday. Right now we're still in the second day of Tabernacles. This whole week. Uh, highest watches being Wednesday and Saturday for me. Um, the last days uh, of Tabernacles is Friday too. So I mean Friday and Saturday, but Saturday being the eighth day. And there's so many things that talk about the eighth day and how important it is. You know, and the gap, the end gathering, and all that stuff. There's a lot to talk about with that. I don't. I can't even talk about all of it. I'm, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to be showing you next is what Brother Kevin Spinebreaker. Uh, give to me some of his um, old notes, which it's a very long, long list of notes. So uh, it includes uh, the Psalms and all sorts of things. But the only thing that I'm going to focus on is a few of the eighth day stuff. And I'm going to restrict from the Bible with it. Um, I think that's most important. Um, guys, before I get there, just, just remember, um, even if Jesus doesn't come back this month or next month, we can't lose hope and give up. I mean, it's not God that's delaying here. It's us guessing wrong. or, or we, we don't know. I mean, it is a guess. I mean, we're not even guessing the date as much as we are looking at these dates and seeing some kind of connection to it, to a date somehow that maybe that could be it. There's a lot of days like that. We've had three full years of just about every day. There's some reason for it to be that day, and that's probably the way God wants it. He doesn't want us to know the exact time maybe because um, it could be detrimental to us because of Satan. Uh, keep Satan guessing. We are watching. We're not going to be called off guard because we're watching. But the world will be called off guard because they won't know. And the, the, um, you know, the whole world is not supposed to know. If the whole world knew, then they would change, but it wouldn't be in their heart. They would just go through the motions and it would be just a debacle. You know, God wants 
true hearts. He wants people that truly seek him, not because they're afraid of their life, but because he loves, because they love him. That's a very important to understand, you know. It's, um, it's about God. It's about Christ. It's not about us. Um, though we will be lifted up and, and, and blessed in Christ, it's about Christ, not us. So that's something to keep in mind. And while it's daylight, we should keep working, keep occupying the time. But, guys, we're, we're, we've got to be there. We have got to be there. This um, it's, it's a plethora of signs and things in the world right now. It's, it's so much now that it's daunting to even try to begin to start with it anymore. I just, every day, every time you, you scroll through YouTube, a watchman's got a video about something else happening in Israel, something else happened with Russia, something else happened with China, something else happened here, an earthquake there, here, here a quake, there a quake, everywhere, a shake, shake, every, everywhere. You cannot get away from it. There's earthquakes and flooding in New York and fires in Maui and fires in the everywhere. It's just insane. I mean, we're there, guys. The signs are there. A person would have to be absolutely ignorant and blind and dumb I shouldn't say dumb. Well, you could say not be able to speak. I'm speechless. <laughs> no. But seriously, you, 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 I mean, you'd have to almost have your eyes closed and holding your ears to not know, to not see what's happening in the world right now. So, um, with that being said, let's go into the Bible study. Let's go! Praise God! <laughs> Kelly, I love Kelly. He's so cool. Okay, he is cool. He's a cool cat. Okay, um... Thank goodness I don't need double glasses. In fact, I, I, I can't, wear, can't even wear my regular glasses when I'm close up because my, my nearsightedness is stronger than all the rest. So, I mean, I've got, I actually have to wear my glasses because I'm nearsighted. I can't see far out. But it's with my age, it's gotten to where <laughs> things kind of got pushed out. I don't know, it's weird. Anyways, I can see better without my glasses than I can with them. So let's see where we're going to start at. Um... I want to start with um, Numbers 29, uh, and I wrote 12 through 35. Okay, let me see what I wrote down here as notes. Feast of Tabernacles, each day they're offering burnt offerings uh, for the Lord. On the seventh day, um, I'm sorry, on the seventh month, on the 15th day, that would be Tabernacles, because on the uh, 10th day is the Day of Atonement. Um First day is Rosh Hashanah. So the uh, so the seventh day, fifth, the seventh month, fifteenth day in Israel would be Sukkot. All right. So so on the eighth day, which would be a solemn assembly with no several work, it's like a Sabbath. It's as a Sabbath. There is no mention of a solemn assembly on day seven of Tabernacles. So let's go there. Let's go to Numbers chapter twenty nine, verses twelve through 35 and I hope I got this right okay chapter 29 12 through 35 and on the 15th day of the seventh month ye shall have an holy convocation ye shall do no several work and ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days and ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Thirteen young bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year, and they shall be without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three tenths deal unto uh, three tenth deals unto every bullock of thirteen bullocks, two tenth deals to each ram of the two rams. And a several tenth deal to each lamb of the 14 lambs. Okay, this is a lot of stuff. But basically, it's just talking about all the different burnt offerings. So let me move on down to uh, to where I was wanting to get to. So um, on 30, verse 35, it says, on the eighth day. Okay, remember, it was seven days they did the burnt offerings. But on the eighth day shall have a solemn assembly. Ye shall do no several work therein. That sounds like a Sabbath to me. That's a holy. That's a holy convocation. So the seven days of tabernacles is work because they're they're doing you know all these things. Well, I wouldn't say it's work. They're they're offering stuff. There's also going to be offering stuff here too. 
But ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made of fire, of sweet savor unto the Lord, one bullock, one ram. Same thing. But it's a solemn day of no work. So I guess you could work during the other days as long as you did the offerings and so forth. So that's the first one of the, of the eighth day being a, um, a holy convocation. And remember, this Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, October the 8th. No, 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 no. Sorry. October the 7th, which remember... October, I didn't hear the show far. I heard it on September and November the 7th, but I didn't hear it in October. I like bookends. So, But October 7th would be the eighth day of Tabernacles, and it will be a Sabbath day. That's interesting. That is just really interesting to me. That this year happens to be to fall like that, right after a full moon, right after this Revelation 12 sign. Remember, signs are there to warn us of something about to happen. I don't believe that anything would ever happen on the day of the sign. That really don't make any sense, guys. I mean, it don't make any sense. Even, we can see ahead, but the world's not seeing ahead. I think that God, oh, he does this to allow time for people to catch on. Oh, wait, that was a sign. We got to act. If, if it happens right when the sign comes, there's, it's not doing anybody any good. So, you know, this full moon has passed now, and we're up into the, 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 the first week after the full moon, it makes perfect sense. And right there at the end of the first week, so it gives everybody a week to have seen the signs of the fall feast and reacted. See, that's what I'm thinking. So here, let's go now to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 9. Okay. Let me make sure I'm on the right one. Yep, yeah, okay. Chronic, uh, Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 9. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast for seven days. And then on, in 10 it says, On the three and twentieth of the seventh month, the twenty-third day, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry in their heart, for goodness that the Lord had shown David and to Solomon and Israel the people. See, I think this is talking about the feast of dedication to the new to the Solomon's temple. Because what they did was they wound up doing the altar dedication and all for seven days. And then on the um, eighth day, uh, Solomon sent them out to their tents to start the actual um, feast of tabernacles in their tents. That's what I think that means. So, so they didn't miss. So that they didn't miss tabernacles. They did the feast of dedication ahead of time. So there was two weeks there that they were with Solomon and all gathered together. But still, there's an eighth day holy convocation, which you know is interesting. That's interesting. So then let's go to. Uh, let me read what I wrote here. Okay, I actually wrote what it says in there. It was a total of fourteen days. Okay, so ten and on the three and twentieth seven day. Yeah, I already said that. So, um, which, which is this, and on the, the, the three and 20th day of the seventh month, which I just read is actually the ninth day. So they actually did the feast of dedications through the eighth day, eighth day being, um, a solemn assembly and kept the dedication of the altar for seven days. So evidently that's, there was two days like that. So anyways, the point being the eighth day was made a, a holy convocation or an assembly. A, a solemn assembly. What is the rapture? We meet with them in the air to forever be with Christ. It's a solemn assembly is the way I see it. And a holy convocation because we will be in glorified bodies. Definitely going to be a holy convocation and a solemn assembly. And, you know, that's, you know, it makes sense, right? Okay, Exodus 22, verse 30. Okay, Exodus 22, Exodus 22, cha chapter 22, verse 30, okay? Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen and with thy sheep seven days it shall be with his dam on the eighth day thou shalt give it to me. There's another eighth day situation where God is saying on um, the oxen, you know, shall do with thine oxen and do with thy sheep seven days it shall be with his dam. But on the eighth day Thou shalt give it to me. So there's an eighth day that's important to God. So here's that was Exodus 22:30. Now let's go to Leviticus, and this is just the last one for now. I don't want to make this video too long, but this could be a study you could go into. Brenda has some of it. There's a lot of eighth day connections, um, eighth days of purification. There's eighth days of this and that. There's a lot of eighth days 
so the eighth day of tabernacles is probably a very important day. Even though the, the tabernacle feast itself is only seven days, I think that eighth day is very important to God. I think it's something that um, it could be like the last great day. Makes perfect sense. I mean, the last day of tabernacles is the last day, but that last great day is when everybody's assembled together, and it will be a great day, I guarantee. Leviticus 12, chapter 12, verse 3. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Um, so there's your eighth day of separation of flesh. And this is what Kevin was explaining was that day there is a separation of flesh, just like the rapture when we are separated from the flesh, changed into our immortal bodies and the flesh has gotten rid of. You see what I mean? Now we are circumcised of the spirit. You see, we have separated from the flesh. That's what the circumcision is to separate the flesh. So um, that's really cool. So that was that's pretty much it, guys. Um, but the important thing to get from this video is, of course, the gospel. If you don't get saved, uh, you're going to run out of time. Uh, you got to do it now. You can't wait. It's too important. Um, there's only one way to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes into the Father except through me. So don't play Russian roulette with your soul. Don't wait for some better moment. Go right now. If you're not saved, if you're hearing my voice, it's for a reason. If you're not saved. If you are saved, then it doesn't matter. But if you're saved, I mean, if you're not saved and you're hearing my voice right now, then I believe God has drawn you to his son. And all you have to do to go to heaven is believe in his son. Put your faith and trust in him now. Don't wait another moment. One second, the rapture could happen. The twinkle of an eye, everyone's changed, and you're stuck here for seven years of hell during the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be the person that's standing there after all the Christians just got raptured to heaven saying, if I had just listened and got saved, I'd be going with them. But I had to be stubborn. I had to, I had to say, oh, I just don't know if I believe or I, I need to clean myself up. I'm ashamed cannot be ashamed. Jesus took your shame on that cross with him. When he was spat on, slapped, beaten, mocked and ridiculed, and ultimately tortured and killed. But remember, he didn't get killed out of force. They could not have forced him to if he had not wanted to go. Jesus willingly went to that cross and laid down his life and spilled every drop of his precious blood for you. So do that now. Do that today. And the next important thing to gather from this is that we are in the Feast of Tabernacles in Israel. There is something special about the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, whether it's been fulfilled by Christ already or whether it's yet to be fulfilled at his second coming, and that's a, that's a debate between certain groups, um, I don't know for sure. I, I mean, I think that it, it could be both, honestly. I think that he kind of did fulfill the... All three, I mean, I mean, all the feasts. I believe he kind of fulfilled all of them when he was on the earth, but I believe he will fulfill them again when he returns. You know, because, I mean, you think about it, you know, when he comes back, there's going to be trumpets. Um, there's going to be atonement or judgment. There's going to be tabernacling. So, I mean, you know, it, it fits all, all the scenarios, but it's a perfect time for a rapture, and every day is. So, um... Between now and next Saturday, I say, is the highest watch. And the highest of those watches would be Wednesday, middle of the week, or Tuesday. Tuesday, Wednesday-ish. I'm going to say Wednesday because it's Tyler's birthday. That's the only reason. <laughs> and, and because other people are talking about the fourth, too. And Saturday, the eighth great day. And it is a Sabbath. It's a holy convocation. It's a solemn assembly. I mean, that could be the day, guys. That could totally be the day. But if it isn't, it doesn't matter because we know he's coming soon and we're going soon and we have eternal life already because the moment you believe, you have eternal life. That Holy Spirit is an earnest of our inheritance. In other words, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, like, it's like a down payment. It's exactly what it is. An earnest, an earnest money is a, is a down payment, basically saying that I give you a down payment because I plan to purchase this item at a later date, but I want it. I don't want... Um, anybody to take it. So here's your down payment. Well, the earnest of our inheritance is the Holy Spirit. It's the promise. It's the seal and the promise that he will return and purchase us and take us into his possession. Well, he's already purchased us with his blood. So this earnest is more of a promise to come back for us 
and take us to his own possession. So guys, be encouraged. We are, this is this is the bang zone. Well, Brother Chooch always says that. We are in the bang zone, the biggest bang zone of them all this week. So don't get discouraged yet. <laughs> this is the time to get excited. This is, this is the time I've been waiting for. Because I knew that once the 29th, I, I kind of felt it. I'm, you know, I'm just the whole day is just like, I just don't feel it. I don't, I don't feel it. I don't even see. I, 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 I know what people are meaning by it, but and I wanted it to be it. I, I talked about it. I, I, I said it was the highest watch before, but um, that whole day I just didn't feel it. Now, I haven't made any videos because I just I haven't felt it until yesterday when I felt like the Lord led me. I mean, because the whole way that I come about John 7, and John 7 is 7, it's the number 7, chapter 7. So, I mean, and John was the, what, he the apostle that Jesus loved. So, uh, there's just so many things, I believe. And John was the one that he says, uh, if, if I want him to be alive until I return, what's that to you? He says that, I think, to Simon Peter. So, I mean, John 7, <laughs> the seventh day of October, I think, is going to be a big day. That's the one I'm really looking at the hardest, but I'm all this week, middle of the week, fourth. And um, like I said, whether it happens or not, be encouraged, stay encouraged. Jesus is coming back soon. Um, we don't know the exact time, but we know it soon. And it could literally be in five minutes. We don't know. Um, we don't know. So uh, I guess I will see y'all in the next video. I'll probably be next weekend. So I love y'all so much. Have a good week. And if something comes up that's just, um, this can't wait, I'll make another video. But uh, I hope we're going before then. Hopefully I'll see you there, here, there, or especially in the air. Love y'all. Bye.